Hey there, welcome back to Do It Yourself Telecom, where I cover telecom related topics explained for the non-professionals and those aspiring to be professionals. We're going to cover household wiring right here. So in residential environments, the wiring for telephones is a little bit different than it is for commercial environments. Sometimes it can be the same, but uh, oftentimes it's a little different and so I'm going to show you both styles and so you can know how to either add or repair or troubleshoot a telephone jack. Let's talk about the two different types of wires you might have and let's talk about the three different types of jacks you might have. So the two different types of wire you're going to inc um, inc uh, encounter uh, is either going to be uh, the commercial uh, four pair, uh, what they call UTP, unshielded twisted pair. The way you'll know that is you'll see you'll see four sets of wires twisted together, but they call those pair, and they'll have four different colors: blue, orange, green, brown. The other kind you're going to run into, uh, and this is more common in private residential, like in homes, especially homes built like in the '60s, '70s, '80s, and I guess even in the '90s, uh, is the the uh, four wire, uh, what they call drop wire, or, or two pair drop wire. It's typically a tan jacket with four wires inside, and those wires are red, green, black, and yellow. Uh, you may even see some of this with a few other colors, like a blue and a white. The key to doing residential wiring for single line telephones is just to keep the colors matched up. And we're gonna get into that in just a minute. The three different types of jacks you're gonna encounter are what they call, um, Flush mount, meaning that it's flush with the wall. Obviously not with those wires sticking out the side like that, okay? The other one you're gonna see is what they call surface. So it, it sits on the wall or it sits on a baseboard, but it doesn't, it's not flush with the wall. Um, in the industry, this is oftentimes referred to as a biscuit jack because it kind of looks like a biscuit. And then the other one you're probably gonna encounter or may encounter is the, um, the wall mount jack which is different from this kind of jack. A wall mount jack is designed to hold a phone on the wall. So it actually mounts on the outside of the wall or on some kind of surface. And these little tabs right here, they hold the telephone. So you take the phone, you put it on, slide it down, and it connects right there. You know, you saw those like in you know your kitchens growing up or maybe in your grandma's house. You don't see them quite so much anymore, but that's wall mount. All right. And within those, two different styles of connecting the insides are screw post and then um, 110 or modular. All right, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Now, all the wiring that delivers a telephone line into your house begins at what's known as a DMARC. And I'm gonna cut over for a second for a quick little video talking about the DMARC because you need to understand that that's where your service begins. Okay, so this is the telephone D mark on the outside of my house, right here. A few clues that kind of give it away, or you'll see a phrase like network interface. You might see something about customer access. Um, got something here that says AT&T. Yours might say Southwestern Bell, Southern New England Telephone, Frontier. Anyway, the point is is that you locate this box whether it be on the outside of your building or might be in the inside and you know in some cases with apartments you may not even have one but this is the point where the phone company brings in their service either from underground or off the pole or off the street goes into here and then all the wiring that goes beyond here goes into your house is is your inside wiring all right so that is what a DMARC is Okay, so now that you understand the DMARC, and let's say we've got some wires here, and we know that these are coming from the DMARC, and what we do is we wanna take and match the colors. So on a screw post, you've got red, green, yellow, black. You just match the colors. Red, green, yellow, black. That's all you gotta do is just match the colors. Now, typically a single line telephone in residential environments only runs on what's known as one pair, a tip and a ring tip and ring. That's just telephony speak for uh, the green and the red. Tip and a ring. That's all you really need to worry about is, is, is those two wires. However, if it, everything's already wired in four wire, you might as well go ahead and keep it that way. Also, if you have a second line in your residence, then that might be on the black and the yellow. And by the way, the black is tip and the yellow is ring. If you have commercial wiring, 
then the tip and ring for your single line is just going to be on the blue pair. So the, the wire that's more white than blue, we call that the white blue wire, is the tip. And the darker, the dark blue or solid blue, or one that's more blue than, than white, is known as is the, is the ring. The way those match up is, if the green is the tip, then you match the, the white blue to the green, and you match the solid blue to the red, okay? So, and you won't see screw post um, jacks with, with, with the, uh, the white blue blue. You might see it with modular, but you won't see it with the screw post. So, the other thing you could run into is the, um, the wiring from the D mark might either be in a star pattern, meaning that, that there's a home run. So, I mean, the wire is individually run from the jack straight back to the D mark, and that's true for every jack in your house. But oftentimes, especially in older construction, the wire is serialized, meaning that it goes from the D mark to a jack like this. Okay, so imagine that this was all screwed down. And then another wire will go from here, double, double terminated, meaning, meaning you've got two sets tied down on the same screw post, then it goes to another jack. So when you're troubleshooting, if you've got a jack that's not working, it's possible that you might need to go to another jack in the house and find out if maybe the wires have become corroded or disconnected. Because it might be that, say for instance, the jack in your kitchen uh, is not working because the the spot where say maybe let's say for instance in the bedroom where the second pair of wire has like come on you know either corroded or come apart or fallen off or something like that all right so if you do have serialized wiring the way you'll know is usually you'll see you'll see two two wires like this you'll see one coming in and one going back out and um, and so if you're troubleshooting a problem with no dial tone on a jack in one part of your house it's possible that it's because the wires come apart in another part of the house like at another jack. Other than the screw post, okay, so I showed you screw post. You'll see screw post like on a, on a uh, you know, on a, on a biscuit style. You'll see it on the, uh, on the wall mount style. See, it's got the screw post right here. You can see the colors where they go on the back. And then also you can have it on a, on a flush mount where you've actually got the post right in the back. Now this jack is a modular jack. The reason they call it modular is because it literally is a module that connects into a, a, a blank faceplate. All right, so there's your, there's your little modular jack, and then there's your faceplate. And you can have these with one, two, three, four, even as much as six of these little holes where you can put you know, different jacks in there. All you're concerned about is getting the red and the green into the tip and ring spot on this jack. And I'm gonna tell you what that is. The tip is the little spot, see these little color codes right here? Where you see a little spot marked with a blue and a white. And the ring, or the red, needs to go in the solid blue. All right, now don't get fooled. There is a green there, but you don't wanna put this green on there. You wanna put the red on the blue. You wanna put the green on the white blue. If you have what's known as a punch tool, you can take and you can lay these wires inside the little slots, a little bit of slots in there. You, you put the wires in the slots like that. And then what you do is you take the punch tool and you, and you, uh, you, you, you hard to explain, but the punch tool pushes down on that wire in such a way that it pushes in there and it cuts the excess wire off. And then when you're done, you put the cap on. If you don't have a punch tool, and most you know, uh, people who don't do this all the time don't have a punch tool, you can take those wires and push them in as much as you can with your fingernails, like that. And then you can take the cap, and you can put the cap on like that. You can take a pair of pliers, and you can cinch down on that cap, and what that'll do is it'll push that, it'll push that wire down in where it needs to go. And then when you're done, just take a uh, pair of, well, these are called snips, but they look like scissors. And then you, uh, you just cut those off. These are special telecom scissors. They're called snips. You can get them at the big box warehouse stores, or I've got a link in the description where you can get these if you're interested. So um, the problem with the modular stuff is it doesn't lend itself well to the serial thing because you, it can't, I mean, I suppose you could, but it doesn't work well. You can't have a set of wires coming in and a set of wires going back out to go to the next jack. This is more used for commercial environments. Typically, what you see in most residences is the screw terminal types. 
All right, so I hope that helps you with your problems or new installations. If you are installing a brand new phone jack and you wanna know how to do this trick with the, with, in the drywall, you get these things, they're called caddy clips. Uh, there's probably a generic name for it, but caddy is the name that makes them. Again, big box store or you know online. And what you do is you, you find a spot and take like a pencil and just you know make a little outline and then you cut just a little bit outside the pencil line and then when you're done you you know get rid of that sheet rock that's in the middle and then you um, you put this thing in here I'll take it out of the package you put this thing in and then what happens is these little ears right here they fold out like that and they go in the wall and then you bend the ears back and what happens is they come with little screws that you use to go into the drywall and then it comes to the other side and it bites onto that little ear on the back and it holds it and it gives you that what they call like a mud ring for the uh for you to mount the uh, surface mount jack on okay hey please leave me some comments let me know if that helped or uh, something else that uh, isn't clear maybe i can redo the video or give you another one i appreciate your viewership and thanks for watching